should I start? Okay. Um, Sego. My name is Sigrid Neve, and I am Mohawk on my mother's side, Six Nations, um, and I am a Swedish on my father's side. I am 59 years old, and this is not my first time being at INAC. We have been here for 61 days now. Uh, I've been here for 56 days. I left briefly for uh, to visit a healing lodge uh, for my own self-care, and um, now I'm back. We um, came here on July 20th of this year and we sat with three lawn chairs, Sue Lynn, Carrie and I, and uh, we've been here ever since. Um, we were here about 17 months ago in April of 2016 for the very same issue of youth suicide, First, Na First Nations Indigenous Youth Suicide. And what brought us here the first time was uh, Apwatiskat was the main uh, focus, but now it's branched out to all of the 49 uh, communities that are part of NAN. Um, we're here because of the children. It's not about us. It is about the youth that are committing suicide and why they're committing suicide. And um, we know what it is. We know it's a lack of water, a lack of housing, overcrowded housing. We know um, firsthand, we, we speak to the communities, They've told us they've held them up in litigation and 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 all kinds of um, contracts and and they, they just drag it out before they will do anything and that's why we're here. So um, Duncan Campbell Scott was the Indigenous Affairs or the Indi Indian Affairs Minister or Superintendent in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and he came up with a statement. Um, about the final solution and the final solution was a, a phrase he coined not Adolf Hitler and he said the final solution to the Indian problem is to absorb the Indian in the body politic of Canada thereby eliminating the Indian and eliminating the Indian department so by eliminating the Indian and the Indian department that means there's if there's no more Indians left there's no more title to land and then the land is all free for the taking for the Canadian government um, for complete resource extraction. Also, with the um, uh, with the demise of the Indian, um, somebody along the line must have thought, well, if there's no more Indian department, no more Indians, and no more Indian department, then we're all out of our jobs. But if we keep the indigenous people, the Indian people, just enough impoverished, we all get to keep our sunshineless salaries and our jobs. A reserve is land that was set apart out of sight, out of mind from all the newcomers that were coming to Canada. And it was a, a, a boundary system, it was a boundary, boundary territory surrounded quite often by what was known as their traditional territory. But it was a smaller piece of land which had a, a, this defined border around it that was never meant to grow with a flourishing population. It was always meant to diminish with the demise of the noble savage. So there was never intent for our populations to grow and be successful. There were imposed policies upon us through the Indian Act. Um, I'm going to read you a quote uh, about the splitting of INAC into two different ministries um, from Pam Palmatier. So Pam, this is her take on it. Is she said, it's another superficial act that does nothing for people on the ground. The problem has always been a lack of political will to do what they're legally and morally bound to do. And what that means is that they will, they will fight any, any way to uh, lawyer up to not release any of the monies that are held in trust, in land claims and in royalties. Uh, it is our money and um, we shouldn't have to nickel and dime them and, and beg them for to release what is already ours. So what's it been like here for the past 61 days at this vigil on, on St. Clair Avenue? Um, it's been all kinds of things. It's been wonderful. It's been um, traumatizing. It's been um, uplifting. Um, it's probably also been um, issues with health. The um, 
having to sit here and breathe in the uh, the exhaust of these cars day after day, and have the soot from traffic come upon us, uh, the the dust in the sand from the uh, construction that we've been through recently, um, tearing up the sidewalks and the asphalt. All of these things, I'm sure, have compromised our health in different ways. Both Sigrid and I had the opportunity to take time off from here. I had a, a holiday that had been pre-planned before this vigil took place to go down east with my daughter and visit her out down east. Um, Sigurd went up north for a healing camp for a week and um, both of us experienced a cleansing of our bodies once we left here. You know, our noses get packed with the, with the, the dirt from sleeping outside. Um, I don't know how people out on the street do this day after day. And we have um, we do a thing at Allen Gardens, uh, a food and clothing share at Allen Gardens every Sunday, and we uh, we reach out to the homeless community for to help them with a meal a week and with some clothing that they might need. And for them living out on the streets, it's uh, I've, I've only experienced a, a, a tiny bit of what they've had to experience. We have quite the support here. We have uh, we're undercover. We're not being harassed by the police to leave. So. We're quite privileged in what we're experienced here, what we're experiencing. We are getting support from the community that's around here. We just received another letter that was sent out. Um, there are, there's only a few people that are racist, and, um, and but we just take that. It's not about us. It's just about the systemic and uh, racist issues of the policies that were put on um, since colonization. And, and it has got us to this point of incarceration, of, of uh, the reconciliation, and got us to a point of the new millennial scoop, which is the child welfare system. So we are working on that also. And um, we're just bringing awareness. We want awareness to the issue of youth suicide and uh, why it's happening and what we can do to fix it. And we're gonna be here probably for a while longer because we're going to be holding a march and it's, we're going to get many of the communities involved, including the, the new minister, um, Phil Pot, and Carolyn Bennett, and maybe even Trudeau to respond before prior to this um, march that we're going to hold on this issue. We make up only 4.3% of the population and we are the most incarcerated, the most suicides, the most underhoused and the most with lack of, of resources such as water and housing, like I said. And we make up the most for suicides uh, the, and the lack of health care, like Cindy Blackstock uh, has taken the, the, the government to court and, and won in court that this is really true that their lack of funding is, uh, is not acceptable. So we are here and that's the reason why we're here. People are welcome to come down and, and speak to us. There's many ways you can get involved. You can email Carolyn Bennett, Phil Pot, Trudeau, uh, Zimmerman, and um, even the provincial health minister, which is um, just down the street. And uh, he's Eric Hoskins. Every day is different. There's many gifts that have come in, and for that, that means to us that we've been, um, we've been showing uh, why we're here, and um, we've been, um, we've been given reassurance, like today with all the Sagate uh, people that came for support. We, we get more reassurance every day. But it is, there is a lot of trauma put on us. There's a lot of tears. There's a lot of, um, I don't know what, settler people you could say um, that break down and cry when they read the stats. And so there's, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of reconciliation that is happening when you're out on the street and vulnerable because we're, we're all vulnerable to each other. And um, a lot of people want change. They're not happy living um, the same old, same old, and they have their privilege and they recognize their privilege and their wealth and how they've been able to prosper here on Turtle Island 
on the backs of First Nations and they know that and the time has come to do a, a that there's a real reconciliation and people want that they really want that they want First Nations to be brought up to where we should be um, and and to have what we should have that is rightfully ours that's our inherent right and that I, I feel that's what the average old Canadian that's what they really want that's what's really in their heart that they don't feel good right now about the way things are and they want the government to do something because they cannot do this reconciliation on their own policies have to change in order to bring us all up to a good level and a good mind and, a, and a, living a good way um, so it is a it is a genocide and people really believe that and they want it to stop they want it to stop now they don't want it to continue this way and that's what we're hearing from if you want to call it the settler public that's what we're hearing is that they're not happy anymore with the status quo of going forward with this just Nyawe for listening and um, come down and um, do your own research. I know we could throw a lot of numbers at you, but you can do it yourself. You can go on the NAN website. You can go on actually the government of Canada. You can go on their own websites and you can see the stats for yourself. And uh, it's all out there. All the information is out there. So Nyawe for hearing me and um, for caring.